Okay, let's get started. So, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, folks. Uh, thanks for joining today's uh, Sonic community meeting. Uh, before we start the HRD review, I just want to have a quick update. Uh, you may already see in my uh, email for the 2024 file release. So the planned fork date is end of this month. So currently, you know, please focus on the PR review and also the uh, PR match if your HRD has been reviewed and also the code PR is ready. So if the HRD, I mean, if uh, there is no HRD yet for the uh, 2024-05 candidate features, basically, you know, that feature will, move, will be moved to the future release. So if the HRD has been reviewed, however, the code PR is not ready, those are also be, uh, you know, deferred to the future release. So uh, the reason I want to explain this one is because I got some feedback. Say, okay, can I, you know, uh, mark my features as in progress or you know, still targeted for the twenty twenty four o uh, five release? Uh, the challenge is like if the code PR is not there yet, uh, we don't think the you know the feature can really catch up the schedule. So on the other hand, we do not want to delay the twenty twenty four o five release fork date. So that's the uh, you know, a quick update on the 2024 file release. Uh, any question? I have a quick okay. question. So this is yeah. uh, features only. What about for system integration? Uh, adding a new system. Uh, what's the cutoff date for that? Is that has that passed, or is that still for PRs that have been submitted? Are they still under review, or has that date passed to add a new system? Uh, for a particular release. Sorry, you are talking about that one specific feature or you, or you are talking about, uh, you know, in general, the platform update? So this is uh, not for feature. This is like adding a new, um, you know, vendor or a new uh, system platform uh, to oh. Sonic. That one, I see, that's a good question. So, I don't think there is a, you know, a defined process clearly for this kind of the chain. But uh, what happened in the past, I mean, I just say, what is the best practice? So usually we treat those um, requirements, uh, you know, ad hoc. The reason is because we do not expect a new platform. <clears throat> yeah, Zhao, no, I, no. Yeah. Yen Zhao, I think there is a defined process on that, right? So. Uh, I think the yard talk about that. This is, uh, you know, the feature quality will mark like alpha, beta, uh, or, or GA, the feature based on um, whether you have any system tests or unit tests. Uh, I think there is a slide about that. Yeah. Yeah, th that one, yes. I think the question, uh, sorry, I think Robert, the question is like, let's say, you know, he just want to add a new platform, no feature change. Correct. You know, how 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 do they do this one? I think that in the past, uh, you know, the first thing is like there should be no uh, no much code change, right? If that's true, so you hey, sorry, are you, you asking the platform or feature? I saw you asking platform. the I saw you asking the feature. No, no, uh, um, my my question is for platform. If this is the wrong call for it. That's fine. I was just curious about for platforms that have a PR that's already submitted, uh, is this, uh, has the cutoff date already passed for 2024-05 or are they still under consideration? I don't know. I mean, the platform, there's no HLD needed, right? So, yeah. But I think, you know, the suggestion is like, um, if you can catch up the 2024 right, uh, 05, you know, the fork date, please try that. Uh, otherwise, I would say it will be treated case by case. So I, I cannot say, you know, you can go in or you cannot go in. So that's a little bit hard for now. Understood. So it Thank really you depends for... on, you know, the uh, code change. If the code change is tiny, say, okay, I just want to mainly update the wiki page. That's what's happened before. If that's, yeah, this uh, you know. Yeah, rather large uh, PR, um, but I'll follow up on the PR just to see if uh, there's any progress or if there's a potential for it to be included in this release. 
Thank you okay. for clarifying. I, yeah, I think that when you, let's say, when you submit a PR for your platforms, if you can also share the uh, test result, you know, the uh, Sonic management repo test result, say, okay, you already passed 100 or somehow then we can have some idea of what is the quality level for this uh, platform. That will help the community to make some good judgment as well, I think. Understood. Thanks for clarifying. Okay. Thank you. Uh, with that, I will hand over this to the media teams for today's HRD review. Okay, let's get started. Just a second, I will share my screen. Um... Please let me know when you will see it. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. 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 Um, hello, my name is Ivan. I'm from uh, Nvidia team. So today I'm going to present uh, log rotate uh, configuration HLD. It's a relatively small, in general, it's a relatively small feature. It's uh, basically an extension of the Sony configuration um, a uh, framework that we have already. It touches a couple of components uh, like templates of uh, log rotate, uh, host config D. It adds a new CLI and uh, a new Young model. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so this document provides high level information for Sonic log rotate feature and log rotate CLI. It describes high level behavior, internal definition, design of commands, syntax and output definition. The scope of this document is to cover actually all those uh, things that I just said, and um, it covers uh, the next CLI, commands to configure log rotate settings, and command to display log rotate settings. Okay, uh, so the feature overview. A feature performs log rotation separately for syslog and debug files. The Sonic log rotate feature maintains several configuration parameters. Uh, here is the list. I will describe it uh, one by one. But before, I would like to tell so far that in Sonic we have uh, a, like uh, we can run a command log rotate, and uh, we have a configuration file rsyslog. So we can uh, perform log, log rotate and specify that configuration file rsyslog. And the problem here that it will rotate all the log files because all log files are set like are uh, stored in one rsyslog file. In order to avoid it and in order to separate the rotation for um, uh, syslog file debug file, uh, actually that 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 uh, feature was uh, was implemented. Uh, as the configuration parameter system supports the next one, disk percentage. Uh, it rotate logs when they surpass a specified percentage of disk uh, frequency. Uh, log files rotation frequency. Basically, we can configure how frequently we can rotate uh, uh, logs. Uh, max number. It's max number of log files to keep. So when, for example, we set 10, 10 as max number, so 10, 10 files will be uh, kept. Uh, but when we will try to rotate more, times the older file will be removed and size rotate logs if they grow bigger than size in uh, maybe bytes uh, so the feature requirement will uh, as a requirement this feature will support the following functionality it uh, supports showing the log rotate configuration for all the files and configuring log rotate and uh, with the, the list of uh, parameters like this percentage frequency max number and size Configuration command support separate configuration for syslog for syslog and debug files. That actually the, the main uh, requirement why we created that. So uh, for the design, uh, it's a representation of Sonic platform using the log rotate feature. As you can see here in the center, there is a, a Redis server, and that Redis server holds uh, a DB uh, the configuration of uh, log rotation. Uh, so host config D subscribes for uh, the table in Redis server, and it listens for for the changes. Once the log rotate uh, login table is changed, 
or some data in that table is changed, it calls log rotate config service. That service that already exists on the Sonic system. And uh, but now that service is called only at startup. So at the startup, log rotate config service uh, is getting called uh, executed, and uh, it calls log rotate config.sh file. And then log rotate config.sh file generates some Linux uh, configuration files and store on the file system. What is changed is that, oh, sorry. Uh, now we will have a host config D that will listen for the table in Redis server. And it will, uh, it will also at runtime uh, reload log rotate config service and it will perform the same flow. Uh, the feature, this feature requires access to Sonic DB. All log rotate uh, configuration, like this percentage, frequency, size, etc., saved into the Sonic config database. Uh, I'll show it the database later. Host config D will listen for configuration changes in the corresponding tables. Restart log rotate config service. Uh, log rotate uh, config service. It's a simple system D, system D service as, as and as I mentioned. Uh, uh, before it uh, already exists on Sonic. So we just reuse it and extend it a bit to support the functionality uh, that we need. So that's it. Uh, the log rotate configuration file uh, files that will be used uh, is like that. So we have uh, ITC log rotate, uh, log rotate dot D RCS log. That, that's the file that we have today. Uh, and additionally, two new files will be created out of templates course, uh, etc log rotate debug and etc log rotate syslog. So both both of them are actually uh, responsible for uh, for the log files with the, with the same name. So uh, the debug log file, var log debug and uh, var log syslog. Um, here's the flows. <clears throat> uh, that's the log rotate init flow. Uh, at the init, uh, it's, it's a sonic flow, so nothing changed here. Here, just uh, I paste that picture to represent what's happening. Uh, as the first, uh, um, the first service called by uh, uh, system D is log rotate config service. That service, once it's called, it goes to the uh, it run log rotate config.sh file because it's actually the main file executed as part of that service. Log rotate dot uh, log rotate config.sh file reads data from config DB. Uh, and then it uh, generate based on template generate a config file and save it to the to the Linux FS. That's it. And then it returns. So basically, that's the flow of log rotate config service. Next flow is config flow when you are trying to configure some parameters to so like to change the I don't know uh, this percentage or size of the log file to uh, rotate log after it. So you are call you call like config log rotate uh, command in the Linux shell. Then that call goes to the config application, of course, because you are executing it. It parses commands like uh, first of all, it, yeah, it gets that it's log rotate uh, subcommand, and then it gets like all the required parameters like disk size and uh, yes, and this percentage or size, whatever you specified here in the command itself. And it writes data to config DB. Uh, and that's it. After that, it returns data. Once you write a data to config DB, at the beginning of uh, host config D uh, startup, it subscribes for to log rotate uh, config DB table and just wait for the changes. Here at that moment, when changes were, when, when the right data to config DB were performed, uh, host config D sees, see that and it restarts log rotate config service, which from that picture, you know what it, it will do later. So it just write the data to the Linux and after it restart, uh, after host config D restart a log rotate config service, it just return uh, context back to, uh, back to the user. And that's basically it about the config flow. Uh, the next is uh, show configuration. It's uh, much more simpler. So you are you call uh, show log rotate uh, command, 
that command go to show tool, parse the command itself, just to get that log rotate. And what it does, it read data from config DB based uh, on, uh, like it read, I mean, not data, but table, table uh, data from the table in config DB, and it just return that data it uh, just read. And that's it. Okay, so let's move forward. The CLI, uh, common structure uh, is here. We have a config and uh, show commands. As the config command tree is the next, we have config, then log rotate, then specified parameter, the name of the file, and the configuration, the configuration of that parameter. Uh, we have the list that I uh, showed in the table. Uh, for show command, we have just log rotate. We don't have uh, a special uh, parameters here. That log the show log rotate will show the table with all the parameters uh, itself. It's not uh, it's not big table, so it's uh, relatively simple. It's very useful to to, to show it in that uh, in that format. So all the options that it supports, and it's as the same as I mentioned in the beginning. It the this percentage, frequency. A max number and size. This percentage is the flow is flawed, so from zero to one hundred. A frequency. It's a numeration like daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. And it's a string. Max number is the integer, and size is flawed. Um, the commands config command group looks like that. So you have config log rotate this percentage, then syslog or debug because you can specify which to, to which file you want to uh, specify that and uh, like the percentage itself for the frequency as i mentioned like the string daily weekly monthly yearly and the same parameter like syslog or debug for which file you want to set it up uh, max number uh, like here almost the same and uh, log rotate size uh, in the same style just size file and size itself uh, the show commands uh, show command look like that uh, you have a show log rotate and the show log rotate show you that table uh, which specify the file name for uh, for which uh, that that configuration parameters are specified and uh, the parameters itself like this percentage 10.2 frequency rotate daily, max number to file skip like 10. And uh, when it surpasses like 20, uh, 20 maybe bytes, it will uh, rotate that file. The same for debug, but just with some different parameters. And the end is Young model for, uh, for a new table that will be, uh, will hold all that configuration. So uh, the new model will uh, reside in Sonic logging dot young and uh, here's the skeleton code first part of course it's a header and nothing super interesting here the container is logging so that's the name of the table that will hold all the configuration uh, and the list of the parameters i will go over all of them the first parameter uh, uh, first of all key for the for that list is the name so uh, the name of the file will be used it's a string length from 1 to 255 um, next uh, parameter actually the parameter itself the leaves is uh, this percentage it's decimal 64 uh, three digits and from 0 0.001 until 100 Frequency is the string with uh, that pattern, pattern, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, uh, max number from in that range, zero nine, uh, almost like a million, and the size uh, decimal 64, uh, three digits, and the range from 0, 0, 001 to uh, 3500 megabytes. And that's it. That's all the HLD. Well, thank you, question? pretty quick. No, I do not have questions. Uh, so, so question, is this, uh, is this feature only reside on the base image or does it have any uh, footprint in the, in the Docker containers? No, it uh, actually on the host, it don't uh, reside in the Docker container. Okay. Uh, what is the implication for 
excuse me, uh, uh, warm reboot or fast reboot? No, does it take extra cycles? No, it does not affect it. Because the service is on the, we have that service already that is running on the on the system. It runs at the at the startup, and it just uh, generate a configuration file, so no implication in general. Okay, does that what what does it need to to generate those configuration? It needs to the DB to be up, right? So, uh, does it uh, what does that mean for the syslog that generated before the uh, DB was up? Uh, basically, no, because it does not actually that feature is not related uh, directly to syslog. It's log rotate. So we have in Linux, oh, we have okay, one really called log rotate, with which you can firstly rotate uh, a logs, right? And uh, that basically the configuration for log rotate. So syslog is not touched here. I see. I see. Uh, so if you have DB. It was not up for for extended period of time. Like for instance, a newly, uh, newly powered up device that is uh, left the power on for a very long time without configuration. Uh, what would be the default log rotation configuration? Um. Uh, sorry, I don't get your question. Could you please repeat it? No, basically, is there a risk that if this service is not running, the log is not rotating until the service is running? Mm -hmm. The risk that you you can basically the, the same risk that you have today. So, uh, if the system won't rotate the logs for like a long, long time, the file can like increase to the <laughs> almost uh, I don't know. No, no, I mean, I, I understood. If, if there's no log rotation configuration, that that's what will happen, right? So today we have a default log rotation configuration. Mm -hmm. uh, do you still does this feature still support those uh, default log rotation configuration, or does it? Uh, yes, yes, uh, yeah. We will support. We will support the same in code. Uh, actually, we persist the same log rotation uh, that's specified today in Sonic. So if there is no configuration in database for that feature, the current values for at uh, the default values that is used today will be used uh, uh, when there is no configuration action. Okay, yeah, thanks. Hey, uh, yeah, here on uh, one question. So mm -hmm. currently if we have a duplicate log, right? Let's say a port is flapping like multiple times and you repeatedly have a same syslog. <clears throat> so does it find any uh, like duplicate logs, like 1 million times a log has been printed or like 100,000 times a log has been printed? Like sometimes if there is a faulty transceiver or faulty uh, component, right? I know mm -hmm. it's out of scope. Uh, I know that mm -hmm. doesn't come under your uh, HLD, but mm -hmm. do we have currently that uh, infra? Uh, actually, I think we have that infra as part of a syslog, not as part of that HLD. As part of as, as far as I remember, uh, as part of syslog, we have um, how to call it actually. Uh, I think syslog by default by itself suppresses repeated messages, right? Any yes. repeated message, <laughs> syslog. Uh, that's uh, yeah. I think like this orthogonal to this feature. Already, Sonic supports uh, rate limiting. Similar messages, yeah. right? That gets suppressed. Got it. Okay, thank you. Hey, one question here. Uh, is there a way to uh, revert back to the default once uh, some configuration has been done? Mm. I think I think no so far. But as part of, I, I think we can do it as part of config command. So uh, it's a good, actually, it's a good item. It's a good item to add. So I will, I will mention that in the, here in the config command, and we'll double check to to mention that we we should be able to to revert the default value, and we'll double check if uh, we do it really in the code. Uh, thank you for the question. It's really, it's really. Useful. Okay. 
Hey, you so, uh, uh, one question here. Uh, as a part of this mm-hmm. feature, do we have uh, the frequency in which log rotate is called? Um, maybe I didn't follow fully uh, the initial part. Do we have configuration to control that? Yes, yes, we have, we have here, we have actually on the screen, if you can see, we have a frequency uh-huh. parameter and uh, okay. it can be specified as a string like daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. Okay. And uh, second question is, uh, is there a way we can call log rotate on demand? The use cases in the Sonic management test suite, we call log rotate uh, for every test so that we have logs pertaining to the test uh, alone collected. Uh, I'm not sure if that's possible through this feature, but is there a provision for it? I think no. Why? Because we have uh, just a limited list of files that we can control. So we have syslog and debug. And for each file you would like to support that rotation, you need to add a template, not template, but a config file in etc.logrotate.d folder. So my, my question is different, right? You already have the templates, etc. But I want mm-hmm. to call it on demand rather not on the cron job, right? If I'm going to run oh, a yes, test, yeah, I call course. log of rotate. Was... Yeah, yeah. That, that was the reason why that feature actually exists. Because we would like to call it uh, on purpose, right? Uh, just see. using log rotate command and specify the, the config file so in our case it's like log rotate and then etc log rotate dc log and it will rotate the file that is specified here in that file and that that's mm-hmm. the war log okay sounds good uh thank you hey, so can you I think clarify what re- it... yeah sorry i think there's no reviewer yet so if you guys i i, I mean first of all thanks for the comments but if you want to be the reviewer uh, just let leave your comments online. Sure, Enzo. So the question is the R syslog and syslog, right? You you're saying generic log file versus syslog files. I I don't know. It's confusing. What exactly the the, the these two files uh, files contain? Which one? R syslog. The R syslog and syslog. Yeah. Okay. The R syslog. I think it's a part of the history, and right. I don't know the reason why it got. It, it is called like that, but I didn't want to change it and I leave it is the same way as it is. That file just contains all the uh, syslog configuration inside, okay? Configuration files. So for each file, well, it, it for each file, it has like a size of that file, a frequency to rotate that file, the, the, and all kind of parameters uh, together. And all of them, all of that files collected in that RSYS log. We, today, we don't have any other file. I created two different files, the debug and syslog, just to represent uh, a log files itself with the same name. So for the debug file, etc log rotate debug file, we have a configuration for file var log debug. And for syslog, we have a configuration uh, for uh, var log syslog so for those two different files and for the rest of the files the rest of the files uh, configuration still resides here in our so you can't update file. the the existing r syslog itself with the newer whatever the debug uh, rotation options and everything are it are you you wanted to keep it separate no, actually, I would like to keep it as it, as it is. We didn't have a requirement for that. And I think if someone can can have a requirement to add a new file, of course, you can extend it and add a new file. Like, I don't know, messages maybe, not syslog or debug, but messages, I would say. So you, yeah, you can I, I don't know. This is kind of definitely confusing. R syslog and syslog, what to update where? And and if you could clarify, I'll, I'll add a comment for sure. Um, you know, what exactly these two contains, I think that will be useful. And also sure, okay. the the design in log rotate config.sh, I don't think it's anywhere is captured. What exactly you are doing in that uh, um, the config service? I know you are translating the config DB events uh, to a, you are, you are creating a file with that, but you having some mention of what exactly you are doing that in that uh, shell script will be useful. 
Okay, good. Uh, I, actually, I, did, I didn't add any like uh, deeper information on purpose because that file is okay. already existing in Sonic, so I didn't want to like to to add that information here. It, I'm actually no. I'm that's that's a this shell script is a new one, right? It's not already oh. existing. No, oh, no. Uh, the thing the thing that is new one is just that connection between already server and host config D. That's it. Basically, that that connection is the new one and. And uh, of course, a config and show command. The log rotate config service, log rotate config.sh, and the logic between them all is the same. Okay, let me look at it. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Uh, just a second, a comment about uh, files. I will add it. Okay, thank you. Oh, hey, I had another question here. Uh, mm -hmm. Today, uh, there is a file for today. The file that we use is slash etc log rated dot conf. Uh, there's a default uh, config file for log rated, which, for example, in Sonic management or on demand, when we have to at the start of the test, uh, backup mm -hmm. and start start creating new log files, right? So we uh, the Sonic management script calls log rated with the uh, etc log rated dot conf. It's uh, not uh, doesn't have any such variants, right? Do that work as is today, or are you planning to change all of that? No, I think we don't. Uh, as far as I remember, I didn't even touch logrotate.conf file because, uh, as I saw, it just takes a content from or, or from the files from the logrotate.d directory. So I didn't change the logrotate.conf file. I didn't touch it. Uh, but now, since you have introduced these three uh, three different files, right? Uh, which will uh, what will logrotate.conf uh, correspond to? Uh. I don't think so. It will still resist on uh, exist on the on the system. It won't it won't change in any file. It basically what it does at the end, as far as I remember, because it was like a, a, a bit old feature. I, I don't maybe I don't clearly remember what happened in that file, but as far as I remember, at the end of logrotate.conf file. It includes the content of the directory, etc. logrotate.d, and all the files inside the directory. Okay, okay. So what I'm saying is that will continue to work as is, and that is just going to point to this top level directory. So you can have any number of files inside, and it should work as is. Yes, correct. That's that's correct. Okay, okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got no more questions, so thank you. Okay, thank you, team. I think that's all for today's meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time.